Mina, Kongbunwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Uh, as the title of this message says, God is to be feared. God's presence, and it's so funny because I was just talking about how wonderful and beautiful God's presence was and how just restorative the worship that I experienced tonight was and how much I so desperately needed it. At the exact same time, at the exact same time, I, I do remember there was a point in prayer when I was with the Lord where I remembered he's not just my best friend. He's not just uh, the dude who lifts me up and makes me feel better when life is down. He's not just the loving He's not just the loving father who is always there. He, whose strong arms, you know, pick you up and lift you up and hold you up and give you direction and guidance. He's the God of the entire universe. He created me, he created you, he created this entire world, everything that's around us, everything that is. And he holds all of it together by the power of his word and he will judge sin in righteousness and he will not tolerate it. Psalm 76 verse 7, you yourself are to be feared and who may stand in your presence when once you are angry? You caused judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still when God arose to judgment to deliver all the oppressed of the earth. Selah. His presence is so wonderful. It's so great. It is, it is the thing that if there is anything that makes me wake up in the morning, it is knowing that God's going to be there. It's knowing that he has a purpose for me in this life. It's knowing he's going to be there to sustain me through all the crap that this world throws at me. And he is going to comfort me. He's going to love me. He's going to give me his love, joy, and peace through all of the stuff that I have to experience. At the exact same time, when I am in sin, he's going to be the first one to say, Son, that needs to stop now. When I'm doing something wrong, he's going to be, Son, that needs to be corrected. Fix that. And if I walk away from him, he's going to very roughly, uh, I'm like, how do, how do I word this? Pursue me? Yeah, he's going to pursue me. He's going to track me down. He's going to find me. And he will tackle me to the ground and say, guess what? You're coming home. You don't like it? Fine. <laughs> if you're not willing, I won't drag you back. I'll let you wander a little bit more, and I'm going to tackle you again. The next time is going to be harder. In his love and in his mercy, he is relentless in his pursuit of us, and he will not stop until the oppressed are delivered. And if we are, we are oppressing ourselves, he will be our enemy, and he will not stop until we have repented and until we are we have ceased our stupidity and for those who won't turn to him at all are you really going to be able to stand in the god of the universe's presence who created you and who sustains your existence are you really going to stand before him and be con cocky confident bold arrogant when god calls the earth into judgment the earth is afraid and is still. And this God of power and might and justice is to be feared, particularly by his enemies. I love his presence, and a big part of that is because I'm his son. And because I'm on his side, I agree with him. And when I do stupid stuff, usually, usually, there was that period in my life where I walked away for several years, usually I come back pretty quick. And, that, and it's something I've also trained myself to do. Like, okay, th I know I'm going to do dumb stuff. I'm human. I'm still a sinner. But when I do that stupid, sinful stuff, I need to come back quickly, as soon as possible. And so it do that does serve me very, very, very well. Because I remember, again, for those who haven't heard the story in my previous videos, when I did walk away from God for several years, I knew eventually the judgment was going to hit. And it was going to be hard. And I remember the day, and I remember what happened when I was like, I'm going to do my own thing, and God very, very, very forcefully said, No, son, you're not. And he drove me to the ground and to my knees. And it was scary, and it was painful, 
And you better believe what I did was get on my knees and repent right then and there. Like I knew for years that it would happen. And I was dumb, and I didn't come to him in that knowledge. I waited for the judgment to happen. Guys, if you don't know him, repent now. Come to him. Repent of your sins. Accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. I know some of you don't believe and you don't accept it, and while that's not okay, while that's not fine, He's not going to make you come to him. And I, as a human, I wouldn't want to try to make you come to him. It's your life. It's your choice. But my prayer would be for you that God will get your attention. That, he, that when the hard times hit, you'll recognize it's God's hand saying, Hey, wake up. The way your life is going needs to change. And it needs to change now. He is to be feared. And when judgment does hit, you will be still. You will be afraid. And there won't be anything you can do. You know, that's a bit scary. And it, it's, it's meant to be. Um, God is wonderful and His presence restored my soul tonight. At the same time, He is my God, my Creator. And I don't mess with Him. Not like I could anyway. So that's it for that message. It's, it's kind of like the counterpart to the other... It's the counterpart to the other message I preached today. It's the other side of his presence. God is wonderful and loving. At the same time, he is fierce and he is our judge. He loves us greatly, but he will see righteousness in our lives and he will see sin repented of. And those who will not repent will be destroyed. So guys, thank you for watching this, especially if you don't agree with me, thank you for watching this video to the very end. Feel free to leave any comments for or against what I said down in the comment section below. And I love you guys very, very much. God bless.